Hello and welcome back to Bard's Tale 3. Uh, this is Jay Rodman continuing my playthrough uh, here in the Ice Keep. This is, um, uh, I'm gonna try a new thing, which is, well, I don't know that new, but uh, a sort of mapping only episode. Run and fast forward, uh, where I can focus when playing entirely on playing and not talking about it, which will make me play faster because uh, just mapping out the dungeons, most of what I'm going to end up saying is things that I've said before that are probably not very interesting as a viewer. It's a little hard for me to conceptualize the viewer perspective, partly because I have so few at this point, basically none, but maybe they'll trickle in over time. Maybe some people will be interested in watching the game in years to come. In any event, uh, I'm continuing in the Ice Keep from essentially where I was before. And my goal here is to map out the level of the ice keep. My goal is not to figure out everything I find. I'm going to save the figuring out anything interesting for a later episode. So um, I'll probably map out ice keep one and ice keep two. Uh, spoilers, I figured out the stairs. The stairs ask you... Um, I'll talk about it again later, but the stairs ask you the name, speak your name, friend, and, and you can enter. And in the hut earlier, out in the wilderness, we found the frozen mummy of Alandar, who wrote in his journal. Um, he's a name. And so we read his name and we said we apparently got the pronunciation right enough for the stone guardian who uh, lets us up. And so that's a puzzle you have to solve for every stairs up Um on to get to Ice Keep 2. Anyway, um, that's all I have to say for now. Here I wasn't sure how far away those stairs were, so I tried using a new annotation of stairs question mark, meaning they're over here somewhere, not sure exactly. Generally, if I can remember my uncertainty about a thing, I'm likely to just put the name down and move it later. But here I know there's a big wall and there's no way I'm going to get back to um, cross-reference the location anytime soon unless I, you know, teleport or phase door, which I don't want to do right now. So I explicitly added the question mark and I'm going to do that sometimes inconsistently when I feel like I need the reminder that I don't know where something is precisely. Here I figure out there's a trap on the opposite extreme edge, and so I put it there, which turns out to be wrong because I turned out to be 
wrong about the size of the dungeon. I thought it was square, and it turns out to be slightly rectangular. Uh, so that, that trap spot ends up being in the wrong place, which confuses me a bit later, but we'll see. Here in loot, we get uh, a willow flute, and I'm pretty excited to figure out what that does. I haven't done so yet. This time I saw something near another something and started wondering, did I make a mistake? Did I see something from the east side and place it in the wrong location? But I have a moderate confidence that there's just two somethings near each other. That's just why I wrote it that way. Reach the something. Well, one of them anyway. But there's nothing here. There's no message. Nothing seems to be happening. So I spent a little while trying to figure it out. One of my ways to cheat as a modern player is to speed up time by hitting warp mode, which allows me to see the spell points going up and I label it spell point regen. And through this door, there's the something also, the second something. This one's got a big long message about opalescent hulking creature, arms and eyes. I decide 
we're going to look at this later when we have time to talk about impressions and thoughts. Here it feels like we've finished mapping some kind of west wing of the castle. There's walls all around, it's a closed rectangle. Um, I guess time to leave. And I'm not going to update the position of my uh, avatar on the map while fighting a bunch of fights heading out.
This fight turns out to be a bit of an ordeal. Um, I've been fighting mages in melee and being pretty efficient with my spell points by mostly just having my bar do healing, cast continuous healing, and having my melee people kill off all the frontliners and eventually pull the mage types in to be killed as well. But these sleet mages kick out a lot of damage and um, I felt like it wasn't safe to advance into them, so I was like, whatever, I'll just slowly build up my bard song healing to uh, beat them in this War of Attrition. I mean, War of Attrition, I can win because bard song healing, I can eventually get to be my maximum hit points refilled every single round. Take a long time, but, you know, hey, War of Attrition, we win. It turns out... This is a really bad idea against sleep mages. They have some abilities they do that cast damage. You know, like the cats, there's a wave of damage to the whole party. They had other spells they did that were just like, cast a spell, dot, dot, dot. That's not super rare in this game, and sometimes you have no idea what the result is. The result could be nothing that matters. The result could be maybe nothing. I don't know, maybe there's bugs, which there were in, you know, DOS and Amiga ports of these games. Uh, plenty of them. Uh, but sometimes they're doing some kind of buff or debuff. Sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. In this case, it turned out they were debuffing my ability to hit them or maybe buffing their own armor class, one or the other. By the time I finally got up to them to fight them, I couldn't hit them at all and had to spend a lot of spell points to kill them off. This, From this point on, I completely changed my approach dealing with sleep mages, which is kill them right away. Because um, I didn't want to deal with this anymore.
And in this round, we go for let's let loose all of the magics. Wither Fist, Death Strike, Death Strike. And the remainder of the combat goes along those lines. Since this is a, a bad room, a room of bad status effects, so I start mapping it out. I mean, I've been mapping it out, but I get even more careful about making sure I know what is where in this room, making, because you know, maybe there's even worse things. And this is where I take my first step into this room to the south. And you might have already noticed something as a viewer that I definitely didn't notice. Look at those spell points just going down and down. There's a spell point drain square right at the doorway and I spend so much time in it. And then later I'll look at my spell point totals and think, did they go down? Or did I just cast a bunch of spells I didn't really pay attention to? And then I would walk through it again and be like, I think they were lower or higher just a moment ago. Not really sure. Eventually I did find it. I like the sound of this loot, Holy TNT. I check to see whether only paladins can use it. Uh, no, other people can use it. I'm assuming that Holy TNT is basically a reference to a holy hand grenade from the, uh, what is that Monty Python movie? The Holy Grail. Monty Python's Holy Grail? Whatever, however it's spelled. Um, I'm assuming that's a blast all enemies. I'm just mostly pleased with the Monty Python references. I'm easily amused, I suppose. I see a flame sword drop and get pretty excited about it right away. 
So I go to use it and find out it has no use. Weapons that don't have a use are not very exciting to me at this point because either they do instant crit, crit, crit deaths or they don't. And if they don't, they're not really useful to use as a weapon to me. So it's time to brave the field of bad squares. The odd which turns off sorcerer's sight, the spinners, silence, and maybe there's more behind it, but nothing I've been able to detect remotely. As it turns out, there is another status effect square, but not a very dangerous one. The next one is uh, a stuck square, and I get kind of frustrated a bit trying to map out the other potential areas like move 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 come on move please move and then of course into the spinner oh well And here again is the solution to the stairs quote-unquote puzzle. They want a name. I give them the only name I've gotten. I get stairs. And they don't go up though because I'm busy mapping level one. This next square though is very clearly part of what I'll have to do to solve the level or the dungeon or whatever. You know, this is this is puzzly. This is we'll talk about this in another session. And I step one more time into the spell point drain, this time figuring it out. There it goes on the map. For the first time I see the corridor to the east of this middle block and realize this doesn't fit. It doesn't fit on my map. So I have to resize the whole thing and, and move stuff around. And again, I don't remember to move that trap. It's not really very important. I just, I'm just finding it amusing while uh, doing this editing.
This special square, square in the southeast corner is pretty explicit. It's like, oh, you can tell this goes to the Black Tower. Which is curious, because I didn't know there was a Black Tower until they said so. It's like, oh yeah, but outside you saw that this was where the Black Tower was in capitals. And I was thinking, there are towers? Anyway, um... It seems like there are three special squares in the three corners that lead to question mark, question mark.
And of course, here's the third special something or other leading to a special something or other. Probably a tower. The thing in the center talked about itself pointing to the three towers. So apparently this castle has three towers. Good to know. point I check the auto map make sure it agrees with my map and I think huh those four squares those four squares aren't accessible by normal means let's phase door in and see what we can find
And what we found in the end was a power staff, which I'm pretty sure was a random drop. There seems to be nothing actually special about these four squares that are cut off from the rest of the dungeon. It's sort of like a bug where someone forgot to put a door in. Anyway, the power staff, I'm not sure what it does, but non-mages can use it, which is weird. And it asks me which of my party I want to use it on, and then it says fizzled. So it's like, maybe it resurrects them? That's my best guess. And so I fully mapped level one, and I decide to head on to level up to level two, where I'm probably going to do another back to back mapping episode. Uh, partly this is for reasons that I happen to know from playing the game before, but trust me, it's just the best way to package this. <laughs> <laughs> 